So guys, what do you think, what kind of friend this is? I think here, more even clear, and we are more, uh, yeah, we are more on this situation where we see this brand and this is, these are the same letters that works for us even much better. That shows us how important it is to understand the context for using and choosing the fonts, which are really, yeah, tells the users what is best. I am a managing director from the business unit interface design from Zweigrad Design, uh, design studio in Hamburg. And I have more than 20 years experience with developing user experience and branded interaction design. I work for big companies and big branches and big brands. So here's a short selection out of it. I guide my customers through the whole development process for user experience projects and user experience languages. User experience languages as well as UX strategies for a comprehensive product portfolio. And all of them have text, text and information. Text and information could be as well as icons and um, sound, for example, or information graphics. These are all components of the interface design. But all have one in common. Text needs context. In the next 20 minutes, I will show two examples of my user experience design work, all making information suitable for branded languages, making also information understandable for all those users in different contexts, and making also information technical feasible for beloved products. I will start with the first example, shows by collaboration with Hilti, and I will shortly introduce the project. So the project is or was developing a user experience design language for a product portfolio of measurement tools. Measurement tools with different characters. So you see on the bottom right, these are measuring tools with small screens and small displays. And you also see a mid-sized displays on the left, as well as in the back, we had desktop applications with large screens. Measurement tools also with different complexity. So also already starting on the right, on the bottom, we had just measuring tools, yeah, with single measurements of single distances to measure, but also with simple calculation situations and even more uh, and even more complex calculations for the bigger tools and on the back you see a product handling and ma managing all the measurements and all the tools on a construction site for example so that means we had to handle and to find a balance between the brand language between an excellent usability and between a realization which could work out within the project. But let's start first with the framework and the first topic of the brand. So Hilti is a very strong brand for professional and powerful tools. So if you see this tool and the product design language is very masculine, very bold, and the shapes and the faces are really significant. And the product and the brand are really significant and unique on the market for those measurement tools. Even if you have a very close up look on the artwork, for example. So the boldness and the significance really stays also with the logo 
and the typography of her product name. So those both support the significance and the strength of the product. Let's have a look on the context. So the context is a construction site. Construction site with dirt, with noise, with vibration of big machines, and also yeah, with, with a rough surrounding and weather. Weather could also be sunny, could be rainy, could be cold. And there are a lot of powerful men on those construction sites. That's the context. Let's have a look at the technical framework. So we had two display situations in means of the left side. We have a full touch colorful display with only one hard key button for the main functionality. And on the right side, we have a black and white display, a dot matrix display. It's not touchable at all. It's touchable, but it doesn't work. So we have hard key functions. And you see, we also have some gloves where we have to work um, on the construction side with the gloves. These are so completely different situations, but for all those products, we have to use a branded interaction design or develop a branded interaction design. Having a look on the technical constraints again, that means we have different development surroundings. So that means, um, for example, starting on the bottom right again, we have embedded systems with their own development language. We also have some mobile devices basing on Android design language background or web-based um, development. And of course, we have the desktop application. Um, these are integrated in the Windows system. So all these products need similar principle to show the branded moment of the product family of the portfolio itself. So, but how could this work? Having the drilling machine from the beginning of, um, in mind, so we saw that the, the really bold typography of the, of the brand, that could be the thing which works, that could be the thing which bridges all the elements of the different other products um, to have one unique element. So this is so significant. It seems to be perfect. It's bold, it's, but bold does also mean white. So a white running font is pretty fine for if you show only figures, as you see on the left side. But a bold font is really not that feasible if you have flowing text, so like you see on the right side, flowing text, for example, explaining more the functionality or a help system. So both figures have a good and significant visualization, but it all only keeps on the figures. So this was the bridging idea, having figures and numbers in the bold Fund, the bold font from Hilti to, to support the main idea. The common dominate, dominate, denominators are the figures. So this was the main idea, but here we also see we just could keep the boldness. We could not use the Hilti font itself because um, the left product was based on Android and the right product anyway, here we did not have any ideas about um, use, yeah, using the, the Hilti font. So here had, we had only the, do, the common denominator using the bold, um, language, uh, the bold fonts. And even if you have the construction side in mind, uh, we supported this boldness with uh, um, high contrast because on the construction side, there could be a lot of sunlight, there could be also be a lot of time pressure, and the font has to be really quickly and clearly readable. So for summing up, this was what we had in mind, keeping the brand, but also having an uh, excellent usability and really, really good um, options for the realization, but also having all these different 
yeah, situation, technical framework in mind. I will come to my second example, which is pretty similar, but I also had different challenges. Similar is that we also had a branded interaction sign for a huge product portfolio. I will step into the next points, which show more the, the differences we had. So we had a branded interaction design, as I already said, and we had the huge portfolio. But we had in this situation, we had two brands. And this was a, produ uh, a product portfolio, which um, was more um, individualized. So people had different um, and individual needs. And the product portfolio was on an international market. So I really shortly tell you something about the product, which is a home automation system. Home automation system means controlling um, your house or your flat. And everything in your flat could be, for example, light switching on and off, could be, for example, um, cooling and heating the rooms, could be also, for example, opening or closing the windows, the, the shutters, the blinds. It's a product in this situation mounted at the wall. But could also be products on mobile devices, as smartphone and as tablets. But what's and why did we use the two brands, or were we, why had we the challenges with the two brands? Of course, two brands have two brands expressions, also in means of fonts. And what comes on top is that in this situation, the Branded product gets that and invisible. So if you have the Hilly product in mind, you have the product which is really significant for the for the brand. In this situation here, for the um, for the home automation system, that is that the brand disappears because the product is from another brand. So the focus of the branded interaction design was really the interface design, where the brand should be expressed. But why becomes individuality and prefer, uh, personality of products such a big role? For this product, it's pretty clear because um, persons have different flats and different houses. Persons have different products and persons have also different needs and different rooms in their houses and persons have different display sizes on behalf of their product on behalf of their mobile phones for example the effect is that they name their rooms for example completely individually for example if i'm a more or less person basing on facts and not that emotional i say okay if i name my product just light or bulb then it's pretty fine but if I'm a more emotional person and I have a favorite lamp of my grandma and I name the, the, the light, it's my grandma's mass lovely red light um, on the second floor, then you see the label you have to show gets much more longer. So that was a challenge um, in between the developing uh, moment. And we have different users using the product. We have the installer on the left side and we have, of course, the end users. And having a look on the installer, the installer is involved in the very first beginning um, of setting up the product based on the wishes of their customers and of the end users. Installers have more technical language and perhaps they are also a little bit lazy and they have to type in all the name from all the, the from all the lamps, from all the rules, uh, rooms in their houses. Then they say, okay, pff, I just take a short name or I do some critical um, abbreviations or more technical abbreviations, which are pretty clear for the installers, but not at all for the end users. And having a look on the end users perspective. So the end users have those different rooms. They have a more common or more emotional language or even they want to personalize their product. That means they integrate, for example, the pictures 
of their rooms. They could put some controls on the, those pictures nearby the lamp, for example, that they can switch. And in this situation, text was really disappeared because we had no space here. Now let's come to the internationality. What's the challenge with that? So, um, as I told was that the Boschega products were sold only on the German markets, whereas the ABB products were sold all over the world with all different languages. That means, like you, if your language is English or even Japanese, the labels on those products or on these controls are really small. But if you have languages like Spanish, Russian, French, Finnish, whatever, these languages could be very long and the labels on those controls could be so long that the space is not enough. In this situation, some product managers also say, okay, if you have to translate in all to these different languages, that's too much effort, we leave it out. Other reasons also to leave out text could be that if you remember that the products were sold all over the world, and we have to use a lot of languages also in non-Latin letters. That means that on mostly for embedded systems, that the performance is not that high and the font sets use a lot of performance that that is not impossible to bring all the different letters with all the different characters into a product. That could be a reason to leave out the text. Another reason could also be that the um, license model is too complex or sometimes the fonts are too expensive and the decision to take text in or out comes very, very late and they say, okay, we don't have the budget anymore for the font. Then text was left out and I can swear only use, uh, but text is supporting the, the information which the user experience uh, also is, is, is a part of it. So with all these different um, requirements, we tried to figure out the best solution. So the solution was to choose a fund in this situation, which works for both brands, was more a neutral fund. And it was also the idea to find in a free fund to reduce the costs for the, for the funds and for the whole budget. And it was, was also the idea to design um, options for the users so that he could learn um, the meaning of the icons. For example, you see here that we have the bulb with the text labels and we have also the bulb without the text labels. So the users gets the option, uh, option to, to lean, to learn um, the meaning of the, the, the icons. We also had uh, the solution, designed a solution to uh, defined a very um, modular grid system so that if I have a more longer language or a text which is really long, then I could uh, a larger um, element, a larger control. If I reduced in my words, that I could say, okay, the short one is, is enough. So the label could also be short. And we also try to, de to design a first base of UX writing. UX writing means that, for example, if the installer has a very complex situation at the very first beginning, a very complex process, that he is guided through step by step in a human, understandable language to all those steps. It's also about giving the installers a modular text system that this is also understandable for the users and also a modular text system that fits also to the brand tonality. So let's sum up a little bit about all my learnings I can give. Text needs context. I will leave with three learnings, which is the very last mentioned one. UX writing. 
So let's make clear that text and typography is very important for the users and how can we bring those together so that the users we really understand the product. And let's take the chance to design icons and to choose ty typography in parallel. So, so that is uh, the option that we really can support the brand language. And also have in mind and let's bring all the stakeholders from those different perspectives together on one table and in the very first beginning of the process so that we have the chance to visualize what are the really the requirements and how could we balance between all these stakeholders requirements. That text needs context is so important to have in mind to create really successful and beloved products within the brand and interaction design and also for a really excellent user experience. So I'm very looking very uh, I'm looking very forward to our conversation and afterwards and also talk about all these topics within the user experience strategies.